Now, I have uh, uh, something to share with you that I don't think I've ever shared with you. Um, it's, it's a bit nerdy, to be honest with you. Um, one of the things that I love when I made the decision that I wasn't going to pursue materialism in the same way that I was. I used to attach my identity to the ownership of a watch or a Ferrari or this or that. And I was like, okay, you know, looking at the money in the bank isn't um, that exciting. So I like wanted to buy something, but what could I buy that I could pass down for generations that would, uh, that I would covet, that I would learn from, and that uh, would just be something special. And so I started collecting rare books. And I know many of you ladies are like, that is the sexiest thing I've ever heard in my life. But truth is, it's probably the nerdiest thing you've ever heard. And one of the books that I stumbled upon in one of the auctions or whatever it was, was a book by a guy named Joseph Campbell. You can kind of see it, still got the shrink wrap on it. Um, this book is one of his many books, but this is the Historical Atlas of World Mythology, The Way of the Animal Powers, Mythologies of the Primitive Hunters and Gatherers. Joseph is a well-known author, um, and I highly recommend you write down Joseph Campbell. He's, he's worth studying. He's no longer with us. Um, and his life work was uh, dissecting the power of myth, and this is actually a book you can buy. And there's also a Netflix series on the power of myth. This book is a transcription of a PBS series that Joseph had done, where he uh, broke down various myths that have uh, withstood the test of time and stories that have been passed down for many times thousands of years. Many of the stories that we tell, or the movies that we watch were actually stories from thousands of years ago. In fact, Disney has made billions of dollars simply taking stories that are thousands of years old and turning them into cartoons. And we continue to tell the story of, you know, Little Red Riding Hood and a variety of these different stories, uh, you know, and they will be told in perpetuity because the stories actually speak to us at a certain level that they resonate with us so deeply and they're so connected to our soul and our DNA that these stories will be with us forever. And so tonight we're gonna to talk about what's called the hero's journey, which is from Joseph Campbell. Um, that was the way he talked about it, but we're gonna talk about it in the context of business. So we're gonna business, business fight a little bit. Tara's gonna to come up here and we're gonna talk about some of the psychology behind it. We're gonna give you a writing assignment. And we're gonna dive deep into it. But before we do that, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about your soul. See, our souls came here to tell a story. And we get stuck because we think we're supposed to tell the story that our parents tell us to tell. Like the story of, oh, I went to school, I got great grades and got a good job and had a retirement and, you know, um, lived happily ever after, uh, you know, sitting on my porch in a lawn chair, right? We think that's the story, but that's not why your soul showed up here or your soul showed up here to tell the story of a person who became a great musician and somebody told you there's no money in music. And so you were forced to pursue another path. Sometimes your parents said they'll disown you if you didn't. And so you didn't pursue the story that your soul was here to pursue. You pursued something else and, and it's just not the story that resonates with you. And so as a result of that, your soul is not able to tell the story that it was supposed to. And so when you look at like, why am I here? I am here to tell a story. And we are all here to tell a very similar story. And the reason why we're here to tell a story is because up until very recently, the only way humanity would learn is if we told a story. You know, books were not in every household. And in fact, they're still not in every household. They certainly should be. But before the printing press, which is only a recent invention when in the context of the thousands of years that humanity has been around, you know, uh, you know, we didn't have the ability to, you know, pick up and read stories from other people. We had to trans, um, uh, transfer these stories orally. And as a result of that, that is how human beings are DNA wired and designed through thousands of years to learn. And in fact, I would even argue and tell you that 
God is a great storyteller. And the reason being is because why else, like, like how else would God want to work through us, right? He'd want to do so through a story. Why? So God could get, or the universe could get, whatever your belief system is, the greatest level of efficiency, right? So he would want to give me a powerful story so that I could go out there and share that story with many and thereby transmuting people's belief systems, inspiring people, and giving people frameworks and ways to improve upon their own stories, right? So he tells a blabbermouth like me a word. Why? Because he wants me to share that with as many people as he possibly can. And so part of our soul's journey is not only to receive and understand and, 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 and script out this beautiful story that we all are here you know, to, you know, to share, but all are, all are here to, to journey through, but to also share that as well. So tonight's going to be a powerful lesson. Some of the uh, best stories, I'd love for you to uh, share in the chat box here, but some of the, my favorite stories. Now, I come from a biblical background, but I have also studied the Quran and you know, the story of Muhammad is a powerful story that has inspired me. How he was in a cave learning to meditate and a person who had never written ever had written the Quran, which is a vast lengthy book. And, you know, and like, what a powerful story. And although I'm not raised in that faith, I can actually pretty much repeat the story of it. Why? Why is that? Because of the way it's told and the way it's structured. Now, whether you believe in that story or not, it is structured in such a way that we can repeat it. And when you think about great businesses, we can repeat the story of how uh, Google was founded in a garage. We can repeat the story of how eBay was founded after a guy wanted to sell his wife's Ted's collection, I believe, was the story of the founding of eBay, or, you know, Apple was founded in a garage, and there's an archetype and an architecture to the stories that we tell. And so for us to learn how to tell our own uh, personal story and share it is a way for us to uh, fulfill our soul's journey, and then to script and architect our company story in such a way that it can be duplicated, it can be repeated and remembered. And that is the purpose of a brand and a product is to be able to tell a story that it can be duplicated, meaning it's not only a story I can remember, right? Because it has to be memorable, it has to be simple, and it has to resonate with the people you tell it to. Now, I'll tell you in my journey, and I've spoke to every advocate that has joined us, and there's, you know, 200 of us uh, in the community, and there's been more that, you know, I've, I've been around and thousands of people I've been on the phone with uh, in my journey. I have met the most well-intentioned entrepreneurs that have some powerful stories and they just don't know how to tell it. They start out with like their backstory and then they dive into this and then they dive into that. And I'm just like, please stop. Like, I can't receive this. It's, it's not in a comprehensible uh, way for me to be able to go on this journey with you because my brain is wired just like everyone else's brain. And I know how to listen to a story and receive it. And, and, and that's not because I'm any genius by any means. It's because this is the way we are all wired. Um, the movies that we watch, the ones that we love, the ones that are legacy movies, like, for example, Star Wars or Harry Potter or The Lion King, they all have an archetype to this. In fact, if you go to film school and you spend hundreds of thousands of dollars getting a film degree, they're going to take you through this framework. Now, tonight we're going to take some of what Joseph Campbell has talked about. But we're also going to take uh, some passages out of another book, which I highly recommend for those people that are uh, in the internet marketing space, which is called Expert Secrets. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to dive into uh, some of that, and then we're going to have a great dialogue and give you some writing assignments. Um, the first thing that I'm going to share with you, though, is every story has a character, a desire, and a conflict. So you are the character, you have a desire, and there's always a conflict and a good story. Now, some of you are going to say to yourself, wow, God has put me through a story to tell. And I was sharing with Tara earlier when we were masterminding on tonight's curriculum, like one of the, the greatest epiphanies that I had in reading this book, as I was reading it, I was in the worst uh, dark night of my soul possible. This is the only book I had available to me, and I'm reading this book, and I'm like, I, I'm, I'm starting to understand. This is why neighbor number one is suing me, whom I never met, 
This is why number, neighbor number two is suing me, whom I didn't believe I was deserving. This is why my ex is uh, suing me. This is why this person is, I'm like, this is a story. What a story. And the thing that got me through the hardest times that I have ever faced in my journey was I knew God is a great storyteller and boy, is this gonna make a great chapter in a book someday. So if you're going through it right now and you're going through a difficult time and you're, you're going through some challenges, this is such a beautiful belief to adopt is that I am going to tell this story one day in a way that is gonna honor God and it's gonna be so beautiful because it's gonna inspire people and it's gonna be a beautiful story. And this is an important aspect of our journey through our, our uh, desire to build something great in, in the marketplace and to make a difference in humanity. So I'm gonna dive into an excerpt from Expert Secrets, where we talk about uh, the hero's journey a little bit, or I should say where he does. And I'm gonna take you through some slides. They're gonna be educational. Now I'm going to invite up uh, Tara, and we're gonna talk in depth about uh, this subject from a psychological perspective and give you some writing assignments. All right, so the hero's journey. So the first, and you're gonna get these slides, but feel free to do screenshots and write them down, because it's always good to screenshot, write it down, and review it later. The first is this call to adventure. The hero, which I want you all to embrace yourselves as heroes. You are heroes. You are entrepreneurs that are providing the most valuable service to humanity. You create jobs, you create new products, you innovate, you take a risk unlike anybody else in humanity. You are heroes by the very fact that you have decided to do the highest risk thing ever and become an entrepreneur. So the hero receives a call to the unknown. In your case, it might be the call to entrepreneurship. Now, number two, refusal of the call. And this is great for those of you who have been refusing the call. I, many times I get you on the phone and you refuse the call every time I'm like, you should hire somebody and you refuse the call. I'm like, you should invest in some advertising and you refuse the call. I'm like, you should meditate and you refuse the call. I'm like, you should do some breath work and you refuse the call. And I know because the next time I get on the phone with you, we're in the exact same place. Now, I'm not calling anybody's name out, but you have um, really refused the call in an impeccable way. And it's maybe you've done such a good job at refusing the call that this is going to be a whole chapter in the book about how you've refused the call. Because I know I have refused the call uh, in my journey. And so I cannot judge you in that because there's times where I reflect back at my teachers and I'm like, wow, did they have to go through a lot of nudging me to accept the call? And boy, did I refuse it like a thousand times. So the obligations or the fear prevent the hero from starting the journey. Could be fear, could be risk appetite, could be self-esteem, could be a, a, a belief system that has you refuse the call. In my case, it was ego and stupidity, uh, but I refused the call. Now, number three is there's a supernatural aid. Now, as you know, I'm a very spiritual person. And as part of my call, I, God literally showed up and gave me direct messages. You need to you know, make some changes in your life. And, uh, you know, and, and uh, I had some profound supernatural aid in the process. I mean, I could feel my mother's spirit even with me now in this moment. Um, supernatural aids all around me in my call. And many of you have had similar experiences, but a magical helper appears or becomes known. Number four is the crossing of the first threshold. The hero leaves their known world and ventures into the unknown. I had never in a million years thought that I would create a spiritual community for entrepreneurs. In fact, there, I don't think there is any such thing as like, there's no books you could go to the bookstore and say, I'd like to buy a book on how to create a spiritual uh, entrepreneurial community, right? Um, there wasn't any reference. This is new territory. And I'm like, God, are you certain you want me to create a company called Alter Call that's going to arm and equip entrepreneurs to answer their calling? Like, that doesn't sound like, you know, the project that I'm supposed to do. <laughs> you know, I'd done consumer products, I'd done technology, I'd done wireless broadband, I had bought real estate, I had invested in big time companies, I thought I was going to get a different call and I, re you know, I, I had to cross the threshold and do the call. Number five is the belly of the well. And you know where this uh, phrase comes from. It comes from the Bible. And we know about Jonah and the whale in the Bible. And he was in the belly of the whale. King David was in the cave. Um, Joseph was in 
uh, he was enslaved, he was in slavery, sold out by his, his brothers for that matter. Um, and the list, you know, Jesus, of course, you know, was betrayed, right? The list goes on and on and on and on. So this is the final stage of separation from the known world. Number six, the road of trials. The hero must pass a series of tests to begin transformation. Now, I'm telling you, God does this. Like, I think God created this archetype, and he just sits all day long and creates stories. Because I had test after test after test coming my way. But as they came my way, I started to realize, okay, this is a story that's being created. And I just happened to be a character inside of it. Because weird things would happen, like the test would come on Christmas. And I was like, can't I get a day off? Like, can't I get Christmas off? And it's like, no, you're going to get tested the most because this makes the best story. And so I would get test after test after test. And then I was just like, okay, this is, this is, uh, and I have, you know, some crazy tests I could share with you. Strangers would run up to me and scream at me and I would, it would test my reactionary process. Would I become angry at them and violent or would I pray for them? and have compassion toward them. And like all day long, these tests would come my way to test whether or not I was going to fulfill my hero's journey. And I'm still being tested by that matter, but the tests are just different and less dramatic now, thank God I, for his mercy. Uh, number seven is the meeting with the goddess slash love. Now, uh, by goddess, it's like, this could be in terms of a movie, we might be talking about romance. And so there's a meeting with, you know, some sort of a love, um, but the hero experiences unconditional love. In my personal experience, this was the unconditional love that I received from our Heavenly Father, our higher power, also the unconditional love that I received, um, you know, from my mother and her transformation. And so this was part of the, you know, my, when my mother uh, transitioned, I learned love. And so I met with love, like in a way that I had never met with love before. Number eight is temptation. And boy, could I write a chapter or two on that one. Uh, the hero faces temptation that will distract them from their unique quest. We know about the story, for those of you who are of a Christian background, as I am, we know about how Jesus was tempted multiple times when he was in the desert for 40 days, right? And there's plenty of other uh, of faiths that talk about the temptation of the heroes inside their faith as well. Um, the, uh, you know, the, the, the hero faces temptations that will distract them from their ultimate quest. I was tempted with, I don't even wanna tell you how many, but I can tell you that I resisted 99% uh, of the 10,000 uh, 10, temptations that came my way. And so like, you know, there's, there's a few that I, uh, uh, took action on that I have since repented and regret. Uh, and, you know, and so the, the journey continues. I'm, I'm not perfectly without sin, but I do my best to live a life as such. Number nine is the atonement with the hero's father. In my case, it's the heavenly father. Sometimes it's a physical father. But in this particular case, the hero must confront the person who holds ultimate power in their life. And this is atonement. This is why repentance is told throughout stories. For example, um, uh, you know, the story of John the Baptist is a story of repentance. He taught repentance, right? So that's why these stories are so powerful and they, they're, they, they live on for eternity. And so there's an atonement and there's a confrontation that occurs. Number 10 is uh, peace and fulfillment before the hero's return. So there's a moment where you've gone through these challenges, you've atoned, and things just feel kind of good. And this is where the hero moves to a state of divine knowledge, usually through some sort of, some form of death. In my particular case, I felt like I had died. I felt like I had a new, like the old person was gone. I no longer recognized the old person. My face had changed. My voice had changed. The person I was has changed. My eyes changed. People would tell me when they sat down with me, Ryan, you have changed physically. And like, you can listen now, you're more, you know, you're a better friend, you, you're different, they would tell me. And I was like, wow, God is a great storyteller because, you know, like you guys are telling me this, but you're going to tell other people this. And eventually people are going to hear about a person who went through some sort of a transformational story. And we're going to lead more people to God this way was, was my mission. And I was like, wow, like as this was happening to me and people were giving me that feedback and it really manifested itself physically in my particular case. And I realized, wow, like there's a change here. And so I, the old Ryan died, 
Not that he was such a bad guy, but you know, he had some bad habits and beliefs. The old Ryan died and this new Ryan emerged, uh, emerged and it happened as a result of a death. And then number 11 is the ultimate boon, which is the achievement of the goal, which was, you know, I didn't know when I set out to build altar call, I thought I was gonna build a company that was gonna serve. And the more that I healed, the more that I could help others heal. I had no idea that I was going to create a multi-billion dollar company. I'm here right now telling you that the plans that we have in place and the products that we're developing, I have no doubt in my mind as to whether or not we will create a multi-billion dollar company. Zero doubt on that. It's a matter of when, right? But no doubt on that. The ultimate boon, the goal has already been achieved in my mind, in my vision. I have seen it clearly. And the goals that we have achieved thus far are monumental and, and, and magical, but the goals that we're going to achieve are incredible. And the reason why is, you know, I went through this journey and then obviously many of the team members that are part of Alter Call went through the exact same journey. And uh, many of you have gone through this exact same journey with us. So I have no doubt that our job is to help people answer their calling, which means for them to go through this hero's journey and to answer it in such a way that they can share it with others. Number 12 is refusal of the return, which is having found bliss and enlightenment in the other world, the hero may be reluctant to return. This, this was a, a battle for some period of time where I was like, am I gonna do this thing called altar call full time? Is this what I really wanna do in my life or is this a bridge to something else? And the more that I would serve and the more that I would meet you and the more that we would do in-person experiences and events and the more transformation that I saw, the more that I quit resisting the call, like I quit resisting the call. I was like, no, this is what I'm doing for the rest of my life. This is my, uh, you know, my purpose. This is what my soul's journey is here to do. Number 13 is the magic flight. Sometimes the hero has to escape uh, with the boon. You are watching me in the magic flight as we speak right now. Um, and number 14 is a rescue from without. Sometimes the hero needs a rescuer. You know, my rescuer was my faith, Heavenly Father, my, the angel of my mother in my presence and my father and, and many other people that have transitioned that I can feel supporting me. Um, number 15 is the return. The hero retains wisdom gained on their quest and integrates it into human society by sharing their wisdom with the world. When people ask me, where'd the idea from Alta Carl come from? I tell them this story. I tell them it in a structured way and it resonates with people. Many of you are here because you've seen an ad about the principles that I obtained when I was in the cave. These are the principles that I wrote, meditating and writing for two years straight. And many of you resonated with the energy that I was sending out to the world through this ad, you clicked on it. In fact, 26,000 people have gone through the principles course so far. 26,000 and it's just, we're just getting started. And that all came as a result of me receiving some visions, some word, some revelations when I was in a cave. And when I came out of the cave and answered the call, I started uh, crafting this, this, this course called Principles. And most of you are here as a result of it. Number 16 is the master of two worlds, which a hero achieves balance between the material and the spiritual, the inner and the outer world, which is really the journey that we're on. We talk about self-mastery to achieve business mastery, right? What we're really saying is, is we're going to help you master the inner world and the outer world. Business mastery is the outer world. Number 17 is freedom to live. And that's the ultimate freedom, the freedom from fear of death. The hero lives in the moment without concern for the future or regrets of the past. How many of you, by some love in the chat box, would say hallelujah, hallelujah to that idea, right? to live in the moment without fear of the future, concern for the future or regrets of the past, right? Isn't that what we're all here to do? Now, for those of you that are not at stage 17 yet, that's just because you haven't crafted your journey and the narrative correctly, and you haven't shared enough and told it to enough people to get you enough customers to progress you through the steps. And that's uh, the excerpt from uh, Expert Secrets. Now I'm gonna invite up Tara, and we're gonna dive into some of the psychology here and uh, answer some Q&A and hear some Tara's thoughts on the subject. Um, so I think the main things I wanna add to the conversation, which we are gonna talk more deeply about identity next week, but 
the concept of story, right? It's so related to the concept of identity. And the main thing I want to impress upon you guys is that we don't just tell stories, but our stories actually tell us. Okay. Because they shape our thoughts and they shape our memories. And it's how we quite literally make meaning of the world around us. It's how we make meaning out of experience. Our brain, hi, our brain is actually wired for story. And if you really pay attention to your thoughts, you'll see that you're actually telling a story all the time. Our brain doesn't know how not to tell a story. It's just that we're not, we're not aware of this mechanism that's at play. So what do we often do? We tell stories that aren't very helpful to our journey and they can really hold us up, which I am going to dive really deep with you guys in on that next week. But I just wanted to impress that on you guys, just to start thinking about this concept of story and how it actually determines who we are in the world. I think in the top small group, you're also going to dive into stories as well. Yes. So it's important for those of you who are brand new in your Alter call back or in your back office for the advocate program. You also have access to transformation accelerator program, and there is a lesson on story in there. But tonight we're going to a depth level that isn't in that lesson. So I do recommend you go back and and go through that lesson of story. Um, but then also tonight we're going to dive even deeper. Now one of the stories I hear people uh, tell often is the story of betrayal. Yes. Right. So yeah. it's like they you know and by the way the story of betrayal is one of the hardest stories to get over. It is, it is a story that, and the reason why there's so many stories out there in the movies and in and, and the various mythological characters that you know have been with us for thousands of years, many of those stories are stories of betrayal. Why? Because betrayal is a hard thing to deal with. Yeah, it's a really hard thing to deal with. And the thing about changing the script and changing the story, like one of the things I've realized over the last couple of decades is that the, the really important kernel of that process is extracting the lessons of the story it's it's that ability to know and to understand like ryan was saying that there is a purpose to the story but it's up to us to extract the true gold from it so that we're no longer telling the story of betrayal to use that example because it's such a good one because betrayal you know it's not that people don't quote unquote betray one another but it, there is a layer of story there right that's a meaning that we're making out of the situation and eventually if we do the work and we do it really diligently and thoroughly which is another thing we could talk about right because a lot of times what we're lacking is the courage because we haven't made that inner journey the courage to tell ourselves the truth well because we're not seeing ourselves as heroes we're not seeing ourselves as heroes right so if you saw yourself as a hero you have to have courage to be a hero you right have to have courage but on on that so the story of betrayal for example is a good yeah. a good example so like the story is betrayal but the happy ending is forgiveness yeah and it's who you right? become in the process yeah. of this betrayal right so so you know, I've been betrayed. Many of many people have been betrayed, and certainly in business, it happens far too often. Right. Like so, you have the story of betrayal, and it's like we can get stuck on betrayal, and then it shapes you know every narrative, every team member I interview, every investor I talk to. You know, I'm in the story of betrayal, but it's like no, I'm not in the story of betrayal. I I have uh, changed the story and the narrative of the story to be that yes, betrayal was an important part of the backstory, but the story's happy ending is that of forgiveness. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, I am living the story of forgiveness. True. I'm like, the, if you were to say, what is Ryan's life in a single word? It is the story of forgiveness. True story. How I have forgiven my parents, how I've forgiven myself, how I've forgiven those who have uh, trespassed, how I've, you know, how, for, it's forgiveness is the story that my archetype is built around. Yeah. Basically, the, my story archetype from the way I was raised, the adversity I'd faced to the things that I had done, uh, you know, where I stepped out of line and sinned. All of that is a story about me forgiving others, me forgiving myself, me asking for forgiveness from God, God forgiving me, me moving forward without regrets of the past and fear of the future. Yeah, 100%. And you guys, if you're not at the place of forgiveness, it doesn't mean you don't have a hero's journey story to tell. What is the lesson of the betrayal, right? The lesson is, you know, somebody screwed me over in business. I've become a better better at discerning what risks to take. I'm still willing to have the courage to take the risk because it's necessary in business and entrepreneurship. But now I have better discernment. What's the story? Well, in yeah, so the, the story in that, as a storyteller, would be like, she was betrayed. And because of that, she became even better. 100%. Right. So the story has a happy ending. 
Well, they're all happy endings because if you were betrayed in, in another kind of relationship, it's still a happy ending because who did you become in the process? Mm. Well, how beautiful to become a wiser person and not have our heart hardened. Like that is a powerful person. That is a powerful story. Wow. So to be, that's, that's to, how beautiful is it to become a wiser person and not have our heart hardened? Yes. Like that, that's a, that's a wonderful story, right? Because there's so many people that have their heart hardened. Right? Well, that's easy. Yeah. That's not a hero's <laughs> journey. It's easy. Somebody, you know, cheats on you, you cheat on them. Somebody, you know, screws you over, you screw them. That's easy. Meeting anger with anger is easy. Meeting betrayal with betrayal is easy. There's no work in that. Got it. Yeah. So one of the things that Tara and I were talking about earlier is how there's really always two plots in the story. Mm -hmm. There's the desire, and then there's the second plot, which is the person that she was just mentioning that you have to become in order to achieve the desire. Yeah. Right. So the, exactly. So the first layer of the story is you want to go from being, you know, broke to being a multimillionaire. So that's the external story, right? You want to go from being single to being happily married. But there's an inner inner story. There's an inner journey that's taking place as well, which is fundamentally that journey from fear to courage. If you want to put an umbrella theme on it, but it's, it's also the journey from, you know, being not discerning and trusting every single person that comes your way and thinking there is no such thing as bad people or people with evil intentions and becoming the wiser person. That's an inner journey from naivete to wisdom is an inner journey mm. and it will help you get the outer thing, but the inner thing is required. And by through the process of reaching for the outer thing, you have to fundamentally change all people, any person, you know, that's achieved any measure of success in anything in their life will tell you it's who they have become. I know I am not the same person I was five, 10, 15 yeah. years ago, not, not even two years ago. You know, I'm, not, I'm literally not the same person. I am, I am fundamentally different. And this process never actually ends. Yeah. And it actually becomes kind of fun. Yeah, it is, especially if you're, if, you're, if you're writing it. Now, the next phase of what we want to talk about with you tonight is we want you to actually write out and give you a little bit of a, um, yes. a writing assignment here. So why don't we uh, have them get their pens and papers yeah, out? Yeah, you guys, so get your pens and papers out. So we want you to, I think, for, are we gonna do breakout rooms with them? Yeah, can, can we, we set up some breakout okay, rooms? So we're gonna give you three things to do and to share in your breakout rooms. And then we're also gonna give you a homework, but we like to call it soul work assignment. We like to do soul work around here because it's all soul work at the end of the day. So if everyone's ready, Yep. Okay, great. So for the breakout rooms, if you guys could just take a few minutes to think about three aspects of your hero's journey story, which are the desire. So what the ask is, what is it that you want or wanted if you've already journeyed through the story, but if not, what is it that you want? And then, and you can do some projection on this as well. Um, the cave, so that that innermost, that innermost cave, that place, that inner ordeal that had to be overcome, that critical point where you, like Ryan was describing of like going into the solitude, like having to basically go into that inner cave and, you know, be, be alone, right, for however long, because it takes what it takes. And then uh, the, for the third piece to share in the breakout rooms to identify the villain yeah. or the, the, op, the, the opposition. The conflict. The conflict, the conflict of the villain. Conflict so the, the, the villain doesn't have to be a person and I don't recommend villainizing a person because that's not, you know, the healing way, uh, but it's easy to do um, and it's certainly good for movies, but uh, the villain could be a belief system, it could be an addiction, um, the conflict could be uh, you were fired, you know, or you, you didn't have you know, support or your spouse left you or yeah. like the conflict right. Exactly. Yeah. A way of thinking, a way of being, a habit, a pattern, anything like that. Awesome. Okay. Now we're going to break out into the uh, breakout rooms just for you to write. Now feel free to write and dialogue among yourselves. We're going to break out into groups of five and then uh, we're going to come back together and there's going to be 10 minutes. So you're not going to be able to do a ton of writing because we're going to give you, um, I think you said soul work, not yeah. homework. Soul it's work. Soul work. Yeah. We're going to give you some uh, soul work to continue to craft this so you can come back uh, next week with your hero's journey completely crafted out yeah and we're going to break out into groups of five and do some writing and then come back together as a community perfect and we'll be we'll be about 10 minutes yeah and then you guys don't worry we can like 
have your questions written down because next week when we go into identity, it's very strongly correlated with stories. So I will take all your questions on that as well next week. Awesome. So by the way, if you're brand new or you know, introduce yourselves into the breakout group yeah. to say hello, we like to do these breakouts. Um, and if you're if you already know what your desire is in the cave you're in, in the conflict that you faced, you know, feel free to share it, uh, pin it down. We have some more writing for you to do when we return and we'll see you back here in about 10 minutes. Um, now for the next part of the writing assignment, this is the soul work, not the homework, the soul work that we're going to talk about is, I'm going to give you a simple five-step framework uh, to actually write your story of transformation and be able to share that. So number one is you need a backstory. So what's the backstory? Number two is you need a paragraph around the journey. Now number three is you need uh, the discovery of a new opportunity. And I'm gonna digress for a second in that every great business has the story of a technical insight or new opportunity that the entrepreneur uh, experienced. Facebook, for example, he wanted to take the antiquated hard copy Facebook at Harvard and digitize it. Google wanted to make a relevant uh, messy search relevant and trustworthy, right? Uh, you know, Steve at Apple, he wanted to, uh, you know, design a phone that actually had internet, um, an MP3 player, and a phone, right? So, like, there's, there's a technological discovery in, in those particular tech companies or a new opportunity, which is three. Number four is, after the new opportunity would be, the framework that was derived from that new opportunity. It might be a new method of, of, in our case, we have developed methods of coaching that are new, it's one of our discoveries. Um, principles have been, um, uh, we have new principles, new frameworks, new teachings, new methodology that's come from that. In your case, it might be a, a new product, a new service, a new offering, um, you know, that came from there. And then the fifth is the achievement and the transformation. Now, when we're sharing a framework, for example, simple ways, you describe how you earned it. So I'm gonna talk about the principles course. So the principles course came to me by way of doing two years worth of meditation, tens of thousands of hours in isolation. I received a download of over 200 principles that I'm gonna share with you here today. These principles, are discoveries that have changed my life and have changed the lives of many of our students. So what I've done is I've shared with you how I earned this wisdom or this product or these principles or this service. Um, and I went through a great length. And what that does is make you say, wow, this person put 10,000 hours into meditation to give me 50 principles. I'm interested in this, right? Um, and then I then shared with you the second part of it was how this these principles have transformed other people's lives, which then anchors in, in this particular format, it anchors in, wow, like that's powerful. I want these principles as well because they were earned and the individual, uh, there's results associated with them. So I'm gonna go back over this five-step framework and this is your, your, uh, your homework, your soul work, which is you're gonna write out your backstory, the journey you went through, the new opportunity or technical discovery, that you uh, found out. And, and by the way, it might be that you just discovered a new way of doing business, or you discovered a new way of management, or a new way of leadership, or a new way of operating, right? It might be that you discovered that you could have a remote workforce versus an in-person workforce. Like the discovery doesn't necessarily have to be, um, you know, specific to our particular education model. Um, number four is, uh, as I mentioned, the framework, or the product, or the service, it was derived from that. Number five is uh, the achievement or the transformation that that product or that service has created. And so that's how we craft a hero's journey. And if you spend some time articulating a story and craft it and practice it, as I have done with Alter Call, life gets better and better and better every time you tell the story. 
because you get more efficient at telling it, you get feedback from the audience, you see what resonates and what sticks, and you become a better storyteller. And the better storyteller you are, the better your company will perform because eventually, as the company scales as ours is, my job just becomes telling the story to prospective customers, to prospective team members, to prospective investors, right? As I build the company, it's just, I gotta tell this story. And if you're not raising money effectively and you're not recruiting team members effectively and you're not recruiting new customers effectively, it's because you're not telling a good story. Because if you told a story correctly, people would buy, invest, and join you. But if you tell it incorrectly, they're not going to buy, invest, and join you. Because it doesn't move them. We know the thing that moves people to pull out their credit card or to want to invest or to want to be a part of something is emotion. And without the story, I mean, especially as leaders and entrepreneurs, you're not relatable. Right. You're, so you're not going to there's there's no movement. You're not telling people how you're going to move them from point A to point B. And the other really key piece to all this is, you know, aside from the credibility of like the story, it's also that ability for people to trust you. you that is all built. And there's many other things that are facets of story as well. But those are all built through story. Yeah, that, that's, that's powerful insight. And so, you know, many of times when people tell me that their results aren't working, this isn't working, that isn't working. I'm like, you know, we got to look at how you're telling your story. Um, and also realizing that many of your businesses, for those of you who are coaches, your job, and this is a, a revelation that came to me, is after I had gone through this story, my story was now the story of others. So after I had gone through my own healing journey, it was a matter of me helping heal others. So my altar call moments were now derived from the altar call moments of the people that I was serving. And so it's important to realize that and today I wrote in my own journal, I said, my job is to help people help people. Right. So like whether you're a private client, I'm helping you help your employees. Or I'm helping you help your investors to return. Or I'm helping you help your customers. Right. I'm simply all I do for a living is help people help people. Yeah. And that's pretty much all you do, too, because you're helping your team help your customers. Right. And so all of us have pretty much the same job, but we have to understand it and we have to be able to communicate that very simply in a, in a format that resonates with the people that we're called to serve. Yeah. We're going to turn it over to a couple of questions. We might have time for two or three. Just one other Go thing ahead. I want to say real quick. If you're not at that, I mean, it's, it's all about there's levels like to everything. We talk about this all the time. Right. And if you're not at the level yet where you're helping people help people in the same way that like what Ryan's referring to, I think the, the single most important thing to do is to hone the craft, like hone the skill set, like focus on that before you focus on anything else. Yeah, uh, that's that. part of your story, right? That the, is part the, of the, the story, call, yeah. the transformation. Yeah, get clear on it so you can tell the story of like your gift.